So when you eat at home, your steaks taste different than they do in the restaurant. Well, I have five tips and tricks here to help you achieve restaurant level steaks. Let's get into it. Number one, make sure you have a hot grill. You always have to start with a hot grill. There's a culinary term called the Maillard reaction. And what the Maillard reaction is, is the caramelization of the sugars. So if you put steaks on a cold grill and then heat the grill up, you're not gonna achieve that caramelization. So you wanna make sure that your grill is always piping hot before you put the steak on. If you don't do this, that's when you're gonna get that slimy little goo stuff sticking out of the side of your steak. That's not something you want. You want a nice looking steak, so make sure that grill is hot. Tip number two, know the temperature of your grill. You need to know what type of steak you're cooking and you need to make sure that you have the correct temperature. If you're working with a fat steak like a filet, you wanna probably drop the temperature a little bit, but if you have a thin steak like a ribeye or maybe in New York, you wanna have a higher temperature. But it's all about knowing the right temperature and knowing what works for you. Number three, when you put your steak on the grill, the area that it's sitting on the grill is actually gonna be a little bit cooler. What you want is dark char marks. So whenever you rotate your steak to achieve the perfect diamond, you wanna move it to a different area of the grill. So I'm gonna put the steak down. When it's time to rotate it, I'm gonna move it over. When it's time to flip it, I'm gonna flip it over to a different area of the grill. And when I rotate it again, it's gonna go somewhere else. Now, if you're cooking chicken or salmon, keep it on the same part of the grill. You wanna cook chicken and salmon on a cooler part of the grill because it helps you achieve honey golden marks. If your char marks on chicken and fish are dark like they are on steaks, it's not gonna look right. It's gonna look overcooked. For chicken and fish, you want honey golden marks. Keep it on the same spot. That's something I'm always trying to teach my line cooks. Trick number four. At the end of your cooking process with your steak, hit it with a little bit of butter and a pinch of salt. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit biased towards salty food. I love salty food, but try this the next time you cook steak. And don't overcomplicate it. All you need on your steak really is salt and pepper. Steak has so much flavor as it is, you don't need to do too much. But right before you pull it off, hit it with a little bit of butter and a little bit of salt. It's a game changer. I'm telling you, just try it. And finally, trick number five, let your steak rest. I know we hear it all the time, but you know what? It's very, very important to let your steak rest. I always try to do this at a restaurant, and I try to tell my line cooks not to put it in the window until it's ready to be served, and we want it to rest for a couple minutes after it's done cooking. So it's important to realize that the steak's actually a muscle. So when you take it off, it's gonna be really tense, right? So you want it to relax. If you cut it right when it's tense, all the juice is gonna flow out. I know it's tempting. You want a delicious steak, and if you follow the tips in this video, you're gonna want it even more. So just be patient, give it a few minutes to relax. Once it's nice and relaxed, bon appetit. If you learned something in this video, please subscribe. It goes a long way of helping me achieve my goal of supporting and positively impacting the lives of kitchen employees out there. They're trying to do the right thing and trying to build their career, but just don't know how. So by smashing that subscribe button, you are really helping me out by getting my message out to them. Thank you for the support and please check in for the next video.